Have you always fished with bait and curious about catching fish with soft plastics? Or are you new to soft plastics fishing and just want to increase your catch rates? Either way, this video is for you. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide that walks you through the journey of soft plastics fishing. We're going to cover everything from start to finish. We're going to cover rods, reels, lines, leaders, jig heads, soft plastic scents, fishing techniques and all the tips and tools that you need to go out there and catch a whole heap of fish with soft plastics which is a really really fun way of fishing. Anyway guys sit back and enjoy the show. Fishing with soft plastics is so different to your traditional bait fishing. Using light spinning gear, getting on the hunt and using your tools with minimal gear to go and catch fish is a really, really fun way of fishing. You feel all those bites and inquiries and you strike with the rod in your hand. And this is a spin rod, very, very different to your traditional bait rods. It's light and thin so you can cast all day. It's very, very stiff and we call that as fast action. And that's so that way you can feel all the bites and nibbles so you can set those hooks quickly. These rods are built specifically for soft plastics because you're often casting lightly weighted jig heads. It gives you great casting control, great flexibility, really good sensitivity through the blank and comfort. So the rod that I'll be using in our video today when we hit the water, so this is just a seven foot two, two to four kilo rod. It's super duper light. I'm going to be able to cast this all day, but it's also very, very capable of catching some really good sized fish. And next you need to pair your light spin rod with a spin reel. So today I'm just using a 2500 size reel. It's very versatile, very lightweight. They generally weigh anywhere from about 180 grams through to about 250 grams, but you can target a whole variety of fish species. And a lot of these reels will have up to sort of 10 kilo drag capacity. So you can catch some really good fish, even with gear that, that is that light and small. And obviously when you pair these together, it's gonna balance absolutely perfectly. And what you've got is a really nice lightweight outfit that you can cast with all day, but it's really versatile that you can catch a whole range of fish species. Now it's really important to mention that different spin rods and spin reels come in different sizes, and those different sizes and weight classes are meant for targeting different species of fish. For instance, this one to three kilo rod and 1,000 size reel is perfect for targeting species like brim. And then we move up to a two to four kilo rod with a 2,500 size reel, really versatile outfits for targeting a whole variety of species. Might be freshwater lakes targeting redfin and trout. It might be out in the bay targeting flathead, pinkies and whiting. And then you can move up the stack to something like this. This is a three to six kilo rod and that's paired with a 3,000 size reel. And now we're targeting species like snapper and mulloway. And obviously you can keep moving up and up the stack. Next, you're gonna need to spool your fishing reel with some fishing line. And when you're using soft plastics, it's absolutely best to use braid. So braided fishing line is really thin in diameter and it doesn't have any stretch, which is really gonna help with sensitivity and overall control with your soft plastics. Now, a bit like your fishing rod and reel, braid comes in all different types of sizes and weight classes and diameters. You might use really thin line like four pound, again, when targeting brim. You might use something like eight pound when you're targeting flathead. You might use something like 15 pound when targeting snapper. We do have some gear guides, which runs through all of that in the Fishing Mad members area. If you wanna know exactly what line, rod and reel to get for each different species. To finish off that rod, reel and line, I like to use one rod length of fluorocarbon leader. It's harder for fish to see, it's abrasion resistant, and it's got some stretch. So all those things that braid doesn't have, you're now putting this on the end of your rod. And again, these come in different weights and sizes. And what you're gonna find is, you're really gonna go close to matching the size and diameter of the braid that you're using. So if you're using 10 pound braid, you're probably gonna use something similar to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I like to use one rod length, and I like to join them two together, either using an F G knot, which is a really super slim knot, which is great when you're using a rod with thin guides, or a double uni knot. So I've got a couple of options with me today. I've got 12 pound and I've also got eight pound. And that's because we're primarily gonna be targeting species like flathead, uh, pinky snapper and salmon. So next you need to join a jig head to that fluorocarbon leader. 
Now jig head selection is a little bit tricky when you're new to this. That's because you need to pick a jig head that's gonna match your soft plastic, which we'll run through in a minute. But more importantly, it needs to suit the conditions that you're fishing. There are different size jig heads with different weights that are based on different depths that you're fishing, different current strengths, and you really need to try and get that all right. Because what you want is you want your soft plastic to slowly sink to the bottom. You need to make sure that it's heavy enough that it will get to the bottom, but not too heavy that it won't just plummet to the bottom. So when I go fishing, I like to take a whole variety of jig heads out with me. I've got everything from half an ounce, quarter of an ounce, one six, one eighth, one twelfth, and then one twentieth and one twenty eighth, and they're all in different hook gauge sizes. So where I'm fishing today is quite shallow waters. We're gonna be fishing mainly between sort of three to five meters deep, it's next to no current. So what I am gonna be using is a one eighth of an ounce jig head in a size two O gauge hook. But something like that, that's what I'll be using today. And it's really important to rig that on straight. Okay, so next is the fun part, and that is soft plastic selection. And what you're gonna find if you're new to this, it's almost overwhelming when you go into your tackle store to choose some. And that's because they become in different sizes, different colors, different profiles, and different swimming actions. But don't be overwhelmed with it. Actually embrace it because it is a lot of fun to go out there and experiment with things of different sizes and different colors. Different soft plastics work really well for different fish species. You might use something like a two and a half inch grub or paddle tail for brim you might use something like a nine inch plastic if you're targeting things like kingfish so today what i've got with me let me just show you some of the assorts that i'll be fishing with so i've got things like your seven inch turtle back worms that is absolutely one of my favorites very very versatile got some minnow imitations so they're four inch minnows and that is going to replicate a lot of the bait fish that are swimming in this area so a bit of that match the hatch if you can find out what the fish are feeding on that's something that's going to replicate that really well three inch paddle tails another outstanding option in inshore waters even in your lakes and estuaries they work really really well um, slightly bigger profile size paddle tails so that's a 3.75 inch paddle tail really great for a whole variety of species again very very natural colors that's going to be dynamite on the salmon today so we might start with that like to take a different variety of jig heads but also a different variety of soft plastics in different profile sizes and different colors always covering natural colors like your whites and your browns and then an assortment of bright colors like your greens and your reds and your yellows really important because fish eat different things on different days cover your bases have fun with that experimentation now scent can also play an important part to your soft plastics fishing especially on those quieter days where the bite just isn't happening some of the soft plastics come pre-scented things like your berkeleys and your dollar bait junkies are already scented but what you find is after a little while that scent will start to dissipate off them so it's really good to use your own and obviously there's a whole range of soft plastics that don't come scented at all so i like to carry two or three different scents with me aqua x that's been a really really one that i've been using lately so i've got blood worm and pilchard scent so they're a really really great option s factor is one that's been around for many many years that's tried and tested you've also got your procure what you really want to do is just smear a little bit into the tail you don't want to do too much and you'll find that may help bring on the bite especially on those quiet days okay so we're just about to hit the water now and i can see a little bit of bubbling water action behind me so i've got a feeling there might be some salmon hanging around so i'm pretty keen to get stuck into that we will get out there and talk about technique the most common form of soft plastics fishing is probably casting out letting your soft plastic sink to the bottom let it sit there for a five to ten seconds and then hop that soft plastic up and reel in a little bit of slack and that's basically going to lift up and then drop back down to the bottom it's almost imitating like a wounded bait fish you basically repeat that process all the way back through to your boat kayak or jet ski so that's one technique that works really well the other is just the slow roll and that's when you cast you let the soft plastic sink for a little bit close over the bail arm and then just sit there and slowly roll that soft plastic that works really really well Different techniques work for different fish species, but we'll cover some of that on the water. I'm pretty keen to get out there because I can see the action's gonna be red hot. So let's get out there, let's catch a few fish. All right, so we have just hit the water, literally 30 seconds. As I said, I haven't even put my GoPro on my head just yet. And there is a huge congregation of birds just here. So um, there's definitely been lots of salmon hanging around. I am just going to just going to start off just with a small paddle tail so that's just going to mimic a bait fish and i'm assuming all these birds are hanging around because of bait fish and if there are salmon around then that's what they're going to be eating so this is a very small plastic we'll rig that up all right so that's looking good so we've got our soft plastic there and there's all birds around here I'm not seeing any surface action but let's see 
if there's some fish about. So I've just got the light two to four kilo. Oh, we had a hit straight away then. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're on, we're on, we're on. <laughs> oh, tighten that drag, tighten that drag, tighten that drag. Wow. All right, so that's first cast of the day. I promise you there is nothing put on about that. Now this is just a very light two to four kilo rod. And uh, wow, first cast of the day. I'm gonna tighten this drag a little bit. This is a good fish. Wow. How's this? This is nuts. Oh yeah, it's a good salmon. <laughs> so we've picked up right where we left off. So I'm just gonna tighten this drag a little bit. And there you go. So that was on that little Munro's 2.75 inch curl tail. Or paddle tail. Oh, it's a good salmon. It's a good salmon. Oh, he's jumping. <laughs> They're here. And uh, do you know what's brewing about this? Is uh, It is currently, what, about 12 o'clock? And there is no one around. And uh, I've got this all to myself. First cast of the day. There you go. Look at the birds behind us. So what we do, let's keep this rolling. Just gonna... All right, so I haven't even moved. I'm gonna tighten this drag because that drag was definitely a little bit loose. And then, oh, just got a bit of a tangle there. Cast out again. I'll just make sure this camera's on because that'll be a bit of a disaster if it's not. And we're on. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that. That plastic has not even hit the water. So we're going to mark a waypoint here, guys. So we'll ship. Oh, is that soft plastic's come out. Oh my God. I was just mucking around with the sounder. And uh, wow, that was crazy. Oh, look, they're busting up everything. This is going to be epic. This is going to be epic today. <laughs> Save that. Look at that. We're on. We're on. <laughs> Come on, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Here we go. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, look at that one. Here we go. We're going to bag out in 10 minutes. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I love it. And I'm going to tighten this drag just a little bit. Oh, look at that. Just caught him. So there you go. So that one's not as big. That one's a little bit smaller. So again, leave them out if you're going to eat them or put them on ice if you're going to use them as bait. So we're now moving into this productive area now. And I've got a feeling, here we go, I can see the sounder is already starting to show stuff. There's birds really diving hard there. I expect this sounder to be lit up in a second. Whoa, whoa seagull, how close? No, go away, mate, that's my soft plastic. What are you doing? Here we go, so we've got, we've got marks here. So the only thing you want to do is you don't want to land a bird. So definitely just keep your soft plastic a little bit away from them. There we go, got him, got him, got him. So that's what I'm saying, you just gotta take your time there's no point casting and panicking straight away. You might as well get yourself into prime area. It's definitely salmon, you can tell by that fight. Get yourself into prime area and then cast. Whoa, look at this thing take off. Wow. And uh, you're really gonna enjoy your day out on the water. So again, we're gonna mark some waypoints for our members. Get them in the areas. The thing about salmon is they move around and they come and go really quickly. So it's not a case of you're gonna mark them up and then come back the next day and they'll be there. This is a really, really, really good one. What you're gonna find is they just come and go really quickly. So you've just gotta always be prepared. And for me, that means that I've always got, so you can see there, there's the paddle tail and he's got there. So obviously we've had the camera rolling the whole time. Take that out, again, make that choice, either release them, bleed them, or put them on ice. Oh, so that plastic, you can see that plastic got absolutely Annihilated, so let's cast one back in there. All right, they're here. They're definitely here. Now the sounder is not showing anything right at the moment. So here we go. Got him. Got him. This rod keeps feel like it's getting loose. Oh, what a good workout, hey? So obviously our last session on the water was completely bonkers, and we've just picked up from where we left. So. Because of weather, all the flooding, all the fresh water that's been running into the system, I actually haven't been on the water for the last four or five days. We also had the boat show. So this is my first session since my last salmon session. And what's really funny about that is my last cast of last session was a big salmon and my first cast of this session was a big salmon. So 
There we go. Oh, look at this one. Look at these fish, guys. That's what we're talking about. Look at that. So, big, big salmon. Love these fish. So, very, very underrated sports fish. Pound for pound. These are one of the funnest fish because they school up in numbers that are unparalleled and their fighting qualities are absolutely brilliant. Especially if you're using gear like I am. I've just got a two to four kilo rod and a 2500 size reel. So what happens is you'll catch one and then you gotta get on the move and try and find them again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stay here. Looks like there's a big thick patch. They're holding quite high. And really, I'd be surprised if we don't get a bite here. We might change soft plastic. Here we go, got him, got him. Maybe we won't change soft plastic. All right, so we're gonna mark another waypoint here. 109. Oh, that's another good one. Learning to use your marine electronics is really, really key in these areas. So all those birds have disappeared, right? So it's not a case now of looking for the birds and following the birds. There is no surface action at all. So there's no bubbling surface water. So what we're really doing now is just covering ground, staring at that sounder. That sounder is our eyes. So what you're gonna find with salmon is as soon as there's a big bunch of them, they're gonna mark up in massive, massive parts all over that screen. We're going straight back into that spot there. So where I've been catching them, we marking waypoints. So that allows me now just to go back into that same area. And what we're gonna do is really wait until that sounder just lights up and then we're gonna cast. Great time of year, it's really, really funny. People expect that salmon is very, very much a winter fish. What I tend to find is very, very late spring, early summer, they tend to rock up in really, really good numbers. Around your shallow reefs, a lot of times in your sort of three or four meters deep. And you can have some amazing, amazing sessions on the water. Uh, but now, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna find them again. Ah, uh, here they are. Small patch of them just in front of us. Cast. Hopefully. Oh, had a tap. Here we go. Another tap. I think he's going to go it. Got him, got him, got him. Oh, there we go. He's jumping out the water. So there you go. So you really got to put the effort in to find him on these days. Oh, my God. That's a good one. That's a real good one. He didn't fight hard on the take. But he's a really, really... Nice size one. The aerial display on these fish is awesome. They will just leap out of the water. This is a good size one. Sorry guys, gotta fix that camera up now. There we go. And again, on that very natural looking small paddle tail, which just mimics a bait fish really, really well. Obviously very different to what I was using the other day, but um, they are around. They're in patches at the moment, so we're having to search for them. So. There we go, got another one. So it wasn't even working that one. I was just having a little bit of a chat to the guy next to me and we've got another one on. So, oh, they're a strong fish. If you want to really test a two to four kilo rod, then these are the species to do it on because, there we go, got another one. There we go. So they are coming on very, very thick. We're having lots of fun. So I've just got a little bit of S-Factor. So that's all we're using. Well, I haven't used it yet, so this is gonna be the first little bit. And all you need to do is just smear a little bit into the tail. And again, the logic here is, I don't know, if they're a little bit finicky, just get them to play on all the senses. So not obviously just the predatory sense where they're just gonna eat a bait because they're ravenous feeders, but maybe also playing into that smell that um, if they're swimming by, it might be that scent trail that might just grab their attention that might get them to sort of turn their heads and have a look at that soft plastic. So that's the idea. There we go, gotcha. This is a bit different. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, that was a bit... Ah, interesting, very interesting. Feels like a salmon with those head shakes. Oh, it was definitely a salmon. There we go. So they're still here. I'm trying not to hit the... There we go. So we've got another one. Let's take that one out of his gob. There you go. So there is another fine specimen. All right, let's see if we can 
wrangle another one here. So they're all in this little patch here. Let's put that there. Here we go. Got him. Here we go. So they're back. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> they're back. They're back with a vengeance. Oh, we lost them for about 15 minutes there. And all of a sudden, we found them. And they're a good patch of them here because they're in a real flighty mood, these ones. I love hearing that little stellar scream. It's a beautiful spin reel. Oh. And listen to that. Listen to it go. This is just so much fun. Oh, so much fun. And there's another one. Now the whole sounder is lit up like a Christmas tree. So there's another one there. So we'll quickly get that one out of his mouth. Whilst we've got those cameras rolling, that sounder looks really good and it's worst time to have a rod tangle. So just make sure that's okay, which it's not. Oh, we're gonna have to just do a bit of a funny cast here. That's okay, that's untangled itself. And by all reports in this sounder, we should get a hit pretty quickly. So let's just, there we go. Oh, <laughs> he was on, he was on, he's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. There we go. Oh yeah. And just like that. Oh, he's, he's gone. <laughs> I was just gonna say, and just like that, the bite is crazy. You can see that plastic has come out of his gob. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's a big hit. That was a huge hit. Wow. Whoa, what was that? Wow, 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 wow. What do we got here? Salmon, it's just a big one. That hit harder than any of the salmon that I've caught over the last few weeks. He's right here now, so he's gonna come up. Got him. Oh, that is a big one. <laughs> that is a big salmon there, look at that. So we just turn him around just so you can see the plastic in his gob there. That is a good one. He fought really, really hard. He fought unusually hard. Well, that's a really, really nice fish. Whew, the arms are burning. So I'm absolutely thrilled with that one. Well, that's a wrap everyone, and I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Geez, that's been fun. We've walked through a whole heap of fishing techniques and gear choices. If you are curious on making that switch from bait fishing to soft plastics, or if you just want to improve your soft plastics fishing, then my goodness, that was fun to get out there and absolutely tangle with a heap of fish. It's pretty much from first to last cast there of targeting salmon after salmon, that sort of size. So much fun. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Hopefully it helps inspire you to give soft plastics a go or to take your soft plastics fishing to the next level. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Oh, and don't forget to go and check out our members area, which is www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member. There's heaps of stuff on there, guys, from workshops and rigging guides and tutorials, competitions and giveaways, all sorts of stuff. So definitely go and check that out because it does help support everything we do here on Fishing Mad. And I look forward to seeing you out on the water sometime soon. Good fishing, everyone.